In July last year, I published a dash cam buyer's guide to help people understand the different types of dash cams and which features they should prioritize based on their needs. Then three weeks later, LTT released a video saying that all dash cams are garbage because they use old sensors and old SOCs, they can't even capture license plates, and you'd be better off just using a GoPro than a dash cam. So after dozens of comments on my first video telling me that my recommendations were bad because Linus said so, I have resolved to find the absolute best dash cam that money can buy with all the newest image sensors and all the newest technology. In this video, we'll compare the performance of the absolute best of the best flagship dash cams from 70Mi, Blackview, Viofo, Thinkware, Vantrue, Rove, Red Tiger, and Hawk Evo, and then we'll put the winners up against the newest GoPro Hero 11 Black to see if that's any better. To test, I set up four cameras at a time seated by price and I evaluated them based on their field of view, overall clarity, and ability to capture plates both during the day and at night. And after each group, the winner moved on to the next round. In the first group, the least expensive option for $109 is the Hawk Evo DC001, which is two channel and records the front in 4K and the rear in 1080p. Then for $127 is the Red Tiger F7NP, which is another two-channel camera with a very similar form factor to the Hawk Evo and also records the front camera in 4K and the rear in 1080p. After that, I brought back the winner and overall recommendation of my last video, the Viofo A129 Plus Duo, which at $169 gets you a 1440p front camera with a Sony StarViz sensor and a 1080p rear camera. And last in this group, we've got a brand new release, the $179 70Mi A810, which records the front camera in 4K using the brand new Sony StarViz IMX678 sensor and records the rear in 1080p. Something that immediately stuck out to me in this group was that even the cheaper, lesser known dash cams from Red Tiger and Hawk Evo were not bad at all when it came to daytime recording quality, with the Red Tiger's 4K sensor competing very well with the Viofo's 1440p sensor. But based on my testing, the 70Mi AA10's new Sony StarViz 2 sensor was sharper during the daytime for general footage, and it also had the widest field of view of all the cameras in the group. When it comes to license plate captures, almost any dash cam can read a plate of a stationary car at a stoplight or in a parking lot. But cars moving at different speeds and in different directions are a lot more difficult to capture. So to really put these cameras to the test, I used a mix of different situations where one or both cars were moving, and for each group I did four separate captures and ranked each one, and then I added the scores together. For these four cameras, there was absolutely no question that the 70Mi A810 was the best at capturing plates during the day, which is impressive given that it also has the widest field of view, which we would normally expect to correlate negatively with plate reading ability. At night, things got shaken up a little bit, and I thought that the Red Tiger had the best overall nighttime image for a dash cam, and was able to clearly show detail in dark areas without too much motion blur for moving objects. The Hawk Evo had a much lower exposure, which prevented it from capturing any details in the dark, but it helped significantly with license plate capture, since most of the other cameras overexposed plate numbers. Though in this group, there wasn't a single camera that could consistently be used for nighttime plate reading. When combining all the scores, the 70Mi came out easily on top, earning 18 out of a possible 20 points, with the Viofo A129 Plus Duo in second, the Red Tiger in third, and the Hawk Evo last. But if license plate capture is your number one concern, then none of the cameras in this first group are right for you. So in round two, the 70Mi A810 will have three new opponents. The first is a three-channel dash cam, the Rove R3, which is $199, and it records the front in 1440p and the rear and cabin in 1080p. Then jumping all the way up to $329 is the Vantrue N4 Pro, which also has three cameras, but like the 70Mi uses a 4K Sony StarViz IMX678 sensor for the front camera and has a wired rear camera, but it also includes an attached 1080p cabin camera. After that is the newest flagship from Viofo, the A139 Pro, which is $369 for the three channel version and includes a 4K front camera with that same Sony StarViz 2 IMX678 sensor, as well as two other wired 1080p cameras meant to be used for the cabin and the rear. But unlike the 70Mi and Vantrue, the Viofo A139 Pro doesn't have a built-in screen. That means that aside from the Rove R3, all the cameras in this group are using the latest Sony StarViz 2 image sensor, and that was immediately apparent when reviewing the footage, where they could not only clearly identify plates, but they could do it from three to four car lengths away on both moving and stationary cars. 
During the day, the Vantru N4 Pro was the king, and I ranked it slightly above the Viofa A139 Pro in three of the four trials. The 70 Mi still had the largest field of view by a pretty significant margin, and the Rove R3 had the lowest field of view. But the Viofa A139 Pro and the Vantru N4 Pro were nearly identical, so I ended up just splitting the second and third place points between them. For overall daytime clarity, the Viofo and Vantru were also very similar, but I slightly preferred the image from the Vantru, which seemed to show a little more shadow detail than the Viofo. The 70 Mi image wasn't bad at all, but it looked like it had a beauty filter on it, which would be great for shooting an Instagram video, but it doesn't seem necessary for a dash cam. And unfortunately, the Rove was just completely outclassed by the other cameras in this group. At night, the Vantru N4 had excellent clarity and did a great job in showing detail in low light and shadows without introducing much motion blur for moving objects. When capturing license plates at night, the Vantru was also by far the most advanced in this group, and license plates seemed to jump out and hover in front of the actual plate. I don't have any official confirmation of this, but I'm guessing this is due to an implementation of a feature on the Sony StarVis 2 image sensor called Clear HDR, which allows for simultaneous recording of a lower exposure and higher exposure video stream that can then be combined to create a perfectly exposed image instead of one that has large overexposed or underexposed areas. The Viofo A139 Pro, 70 Mi A810, and Thinkware U3000 all have this same Sony StarVis IMX678 sensor, but it looks like the Vantru is the only one that is implemented implemented the clear HDR feature. I was especially impressed by the Vantru's plate capture of this car passing me going about 50 miles an hour while I was stopped at a stoplight. The Viofo and 70 Mi weren't bad when it came to license plate capture at night, but the Vantru blew them away in almost every single case. As a result, when adding up the scores, the Vantru N4 Pro easily won this round, earning an impressive 18.5 out of 20 possible points, winning every category except for field of view. The Viofo A139 Pro also did well, just not quite as well as the Vantru, and the 70 Mi finished in third, and the Rove in fourth. That means in round three, the Vantru N4 Pro will go up against the three most expensive dash cams. First is the brand new $399 Vantru Nexus 5, which is a four channel dash cam, but only records the front in 1944p using a Sony Starvis 2 IMX675 image sensor, and then it records the rest of the channels in 1080p. After that, for $469 is the new flagship Blackview DR970X, which uses a 4K sensor from Omnivision for its front camera and also as a 1080p rear camera. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the specific model number for the Blackview sensor, so there's no way to tell if it's a modern image sensor or the same one that they've been using for years. And last, the most expensive dash cam that we're gonna be testing is the $549 Thinkware U3000, their flagship dash cam, which also uses the 4K Sony StarViz IMX678 sensor for the front camera and a 1440p camera for the rear, but it also adds a low power radar sensor on both the front and rear units for the ultimate low power parking mode. The Blackview and Thinkware dash cams also have the ability to be cloud connected, but that's something that I'll cover in a whole separate video, and for now we're just gonna focus on video quality. And unfortunately, while round two was pretty close between the Vantru N4 Pro and the Viofo A139 Pro, round three was not, and the Vantru N4 Pro absolutely embarrassed every other camera in this group. The Blackview DR970X had the best field of view by a pretty significant margin, but that's about the only good thing that I can say about its image quality, which was so blurry when I was reviewing the footage that I actually went back out to double check that I had removed the protective film over the lens, and unfortunately I had. The Vantru N4 Pro had the best daytime clarity by a mile, which is hard to explain since it's using the exact same sensor as the Thinkware U3000. I think it's probably because in addition to not implementing the clear HDR feature, Thinkware also hasn't implemented the standard HDR processing on the IMX678. So that has a lot to do with it. And you can see how much more detail the Vantru N4 Pro shows in the very bright and dark areas compared to the Thinkware U3000. Every single license plate capture had the exact same outcome and ranking, with the Vantru N4 Pro doing the best, followed by the Thinkware U3000, then the Vantru N5, and last, the Blackview DR970X had very disappointing results and wasn't able to read plates from anything more than half a car length away. At night, the Vantru N4 Pro's HDR image still did a great job illuminating dark areas, but the Vantru N5's slightly lower resolution also did well, capturing a lot of detail without introducing any motion blur at all. The Blackview was slightly worse than the Vantru N5, and the lack of HDR on the Thinkware meant it had just as much motion blur as the Vantru N4 Pro, but without all the shadow detail, putting it in last place for nighttime clarity. 
Just like in the last group when it came to nighttime plate captures, the Vantru was in an absolute league of its own and none of the other cameras in this group even came close to the clarity that the Vantru could produce. And I feel confident that any car that got close enough to need to have its plate captured in the first place would definitely be recorded by the Vantru N4 Pro. And it even captured plates that were too far away or moving too fast for me to read them from the driver's seat. So nearly perfect nighttime performance and solid daytime performance means that the Vantru N4 Pro was again the best in this group. However, I was pretty disappointed by this highest price bracket of dash cams. So I did a little more due diligence to see if there were any settings in their apps that I could use to increase video quality. And unfortunately, the Blackview was already set to extreme image quality. And while the Thinkware was set to its maximum image quality, there was an option to enable Super Night Vision 4.0. So I reran the test against the Vantru with that option enabled. And after doing that, the resulting video was so blown out and overexposed that I completely understand why that option is disabled by default. That means that the two best performing dash cams in terms of pure image quality were the Vantru N4 Pro and the Viofo A139 Pro. And all that was left to do was to put them head to head against a brand new $399 GoPro Hero 11 Black to see if you really are better off with a GoPro than a dash cam in terms of image quality. Also, just out of curiosity, I read that in single channel mode, the Viofo can significantly increase its video recording bitrate. So since it's competing against a GoPro that also is just single channel, I unplugged the rear and cabin cameras, and I set the Viofo A139 Pro to record at its maximum bitrate. So during the test, I thought that the daytime clarity of the GoPro was very good, though I did think that the Viofo A139 Pro on high bitrate mode was slightly better, especially when sun glare and dashboard reflections were involved, since the Viofo A139 Pro comes with a circular polarizing lens filter, which makes a huge difference. The Vantru in three channel mode was slightly worse than both the GoPro Hero 11 and the single channel Viofo A139 Pro, but that's not a completely fair comparison since the image processor is splitting up its power between three different cameras. Increasing the Viofo's bitrate also helped significantly with license plate captures, and it was able to produce the best image in all four of the daytime plate captures that I analyzed. And although the Viofo outperformed the Vantru slightly in each of those trials, the GoPro did noticeably worse than both of the purpose-built dash cams, which is partly due to its much larger larger field of view. Here you can see exactly how much wider the field of view is on the GoPro than the Viofo and Vantru. And larger field of views are always useful in a dash cam, but unfortunately it means that a lot of the video's resolution is wasted on the dashboard and hood of my SUV. And for every capture, you can see that it looks like the cars were much further away in the GoPro footage than they were on the Viofo and the Vantru. At night, the GoPro struggled significantly more, showing much less detail in the dark areas while still overexposing most license plates. And as we've seen in the two previous rounds, the Vantru N4 Pro is basically magic at night when it comes to reading plates and produce perfectly legible recordings of cars moving at very different speeds when the Viofo and the GoPro failed to capture any of the license plate text at all. Just check out this side-by-side -side footage of the nighttime plate capture between the Vantru, Viofo, and GoPro, and notice the huge difference in plate clarity due to that Sony StarViz 2 clear HDR feature being properly implemented on the N4 Pro. So even without all the other issues that come with using a GoPro as your dash cam, like reduced resolution when loop recording, overheating, and lack of a parking mode, I feel like I can definitely say that even based on picture quality alone, you're better off with a high-end dash cam than a GoPro. But which high-end dash cam should you choose? To me, the Vantru N4 Pro is the easy pick since it's $40 less than the Viofo A139 Pro 3 channel, it performs better in both daytime and nighttime when recording three channels, and it has the added benefit of a built-in screen. I also like that the mount for the Vantru is magnetic so you can easily pull the whole dash cam out to retrieve your recordings or change settings rather than needing to mess with pulling the SD card or even worse having to deal with their phone apps. Though if I had one future request for Vantru it would be to have both the power and the rear camera connections on the permanent base since as of now you need to unplug the rear camera from the main unit and just kind of let the wire hang while it's disconnected. Speaking of rear cameras though the quality on the rear and cabin cameras between the Vantru and Viofo were nearly identical and while it is expectedly not as good as the front facing camera, both do a good job recording the surroundings. However, one thing that the Viofo A139 Pro does offer that the Vantru N4 Pro doesn't is buffered parking mode, which keeps a rolling recording so if the motion or impact sensor is triggered, you also get a recording of what happened before that trigger, rather than the delayed wake up and record that you get from the Vantru. 
In my testing, the Viofa recorded at approximately 15 seconds prior to each collision event, while the Vantru started recording roughly 12 seconds after the event, which combined with the lack of cloud connection for instant notifications makes the usefulness of these recordings a little bit questionable. As I mentioned earlier, I will be making a video later this year with all the cloud connected dash cams if that's a feature that's really important for you, but for pure recording while driving performance, the Vantru N4 Pro 3 channel dash cam is the best camera in this video and very possibly the best dash cam ever made. I also think that the 70 My A810 deserves some praise since it was almost as good as the Viofo A139 Pro and Vantru N4 Pro, but for half the price. And right now, it is definitely the best dash cam that you can get for under $200. As always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links and coupon codes down in the description for all the dash cams in this video. And if you found this video helpful, I always appreciate if you use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.